What is going on guys, it's boy coming to you once again with some three-dimensional anatomy courtesy of anatomylearning.com and if you don't mind I'm going to be speeding through this section on the femur and the following sections on the tibia and foot bones really really fast because I've literally done it like seven times and I've had technical difficulties each time so I'm just going to go ahead and speed right through each of these sections. So the head is, the ends of the femurs are called the epiphyses, the ends of the femur, and then the leg of the femur is called the diaphyses. So there's a proximal epiphyses and there's a distal epiphyses. Now let's zoom up on the proximal epiphyses and look at the markers. So there are gonna be a few major markers on the proximal epiphysis of the femur. The first major one being the fovea on the head of the femur. You can see a depression right here on the head of the femur which connects to the acetabulum of the pelvis. The other two major ones are gonna be the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter. Greater trochanter being more on the lateral side and the lesser trochanter being on the more medial kind of posterior side. The final major, major marker is going to be the gluteal tuberosity, so named because it inserts the gluteus maximus. Also, you can see the linear asper, but it actually goes all the way down and is not contained to the epiphysis. Now let's take a moment to talk about the greater trochanter. We remember before the greater trochanter is important because it is the marker which inserts the gluteal muscles, more specifically the gluteus medius and the gluteus minimus. Remember the gluteus maximus actually inserts on a gluteal tuberosity, the medius and minimus insert on the greater trochanter. Not only those, but also the deep muscles of the pelvis also insert on the greater trochanter. Now the lesser trochanter inserts the anterior muscles of the pelvis, the iliac psoas. There are three other markers that are associated with the trochanters. Um, on the front or the anterior side, there's the intertrochanteric line. It's this line right here. And on the back, there's the intertrochanteric crest. And the intertrochanteric crest forms a depression here called the intertrochanteric fossa. And those are just very specific markers. Now moving down, you're gonna see a, another marker called the linear asper. And the linear asper is going to run all the way down the posterior side of the femur. And the linear asper is gonna be very relevant considering that it's gonna be a marker for things like the vastus muscles. You're gonna see the vastus medius sort of hugging on this lip of the this side of the linear asper and the vastus lateralis hugging on this side. Then you have things like the gluteus maximus which inserts on the gluteal tuberosity and runs a little bit down the linear asper before tapering off to the side and inserting onto the iliotibial tract. Anyway, as I was saying, the linear asper moves all the way down until it meets and it kind of splits into this triangular type um, plane which is actually called the popliteal surface, the popliteal surface. Now, Besides, besides the popliteal surface, the only other things you're going to need to know, yeah, this is the surface of the patella, the patella articular surface. Um, but the other things you're going to need to know besides the adductor, tuber uh, the adductor tubercle, which marks where adductor muscles on the side of the leg, the medial side of the leg, insert. You're going to need to know the condyles in the back and then the epicondyles in the front. So these two formations right here are actually called the condyles. And on the front, right, it's it's hard for me to, because my computer's slowing down. Um, but just trust me, on the front side is going to be something called the epicondyles. So the tibia is going to be fairly simple. There's only a few markers that you really need to keep in mind. First, these are actually called the same as the femur, the condyles. So you have the lateral condyle and the medial condyle. 
Um, next, the other important ones that you're going to need to know is the tibial tuberosity. Tibial tuberosity, you're going to find out this is the, actually the insertion point for a lot of the anterior thigh muscles via the patellar ligament. Uh, another formation that you want to keep in mind is the soleal line. And uh, this is going to be relevant for a anterior leg muscle called the soleus. And moving down to the bottom, you're going to see that these knobs are created. And these knobs are going to be called the malleoli. So this is the medial malleolus and this is the lateral malleolus. Now keep in, just, just take note that the medial malleolus is part of the tibia and the lateral malleolus is actually part of the fibulus. So my primary goal is not to get you familiar with the markers because honestly there are way too many to even go into at this point in uh, introductory anatomy but to get you to uh, be familiar with the names of the bones. Um, first we're going to start off with the metatarsals and phalanges. All of your toe bones are called phalanges. They're just numbered, starting from your medial to your lateral side. So this is your first phalange, second, third, fourth, fifth. Uh, but it's also important to notice that there are only two phalanges on your big toe. But for all the rest of your toes, you have three phalanges. Now it's important to note that another name for the big toe is actually the hallux, the hallux. So you would call this the proximal phalange of the hallux and the distal phalange of the hallux. And you would call this, for example, the proximal phalange of the second digit, the intermediate phalange of the second digit, and the distal phalange of the second digit, and so on for each of them. It follows a very easy to predict pattern proximal to the phalanges and these aren't part of the toe this is pretty much the body of your foot these are called the metatarsals the metatarsals so the metatarsals um, are numbered exactly the same as the phalanges you know the first metatarsal second metatarsal third metatarsal fourth metatarsal fifth metatarsal so um just really quickly i'm going to give you a hint as to what the how i remember these bones and what their names are um, the first one you see here in red is the talus. This is the one that connects to the tibia and fibula and basically forms the ankle joint. Um, below that, you can see the calcaneus, the calcaneus. The calcaneus is basically the heel, the heel. And um, I remember calcaneus, I think of like heel spurs. Think of heel spurs, which, is, which are composed of calcium, calcium calcaneus. And then I see this bone right here which is called the cuboid the cuboid bone and i just think cube cube um next to the cuboid is the navicular and the way i remember navicular i think of navel the navel is the belly button and if you look at the um talus and you look at the navicular and you look at these bones right here it kind of, you can you can almost imagine this looking a little bit like a torso and if this were a torso, then your the navel, the belly button, would be somewhere around here, the navicular. And these would be like the legs. You know, this would be like a third leg or something. But that's how I remember this is the navicular. And finally, you have the uh, cuneiforms. The cuneiforms. And they're just named based upon position, medial, intermediate, and lateral cuneiforms. So when I think of cuneco cuneiforms, I think of cuticle. Um, they're sort of at the end, sort of like your cuticles are at the end of your fingers right before the nail. Um, technically, th that would be somewhere, if they were perfect analogs, the cuneiforms would be right here. But relatively speaking, relative to these other seven, the cuneiforms are more so at the end, I think, of cuticles, fingers, cuneiforms. All right, so that wraps things up. I will see you in the next video. Sorry that I was in a rush, um, but I literally really did um, do the <laughs> these three sets of videos like seven or eight times, having technical difficulties each time. I was thinking about just doing betas, but I wanted it to be uh, very similar to how I do the other videos. So I decided to do it one more time. All right, guys. Take care. Bye.